When we think of Capcom, we usually think of iconic games and series with the likes of Street Fighter, Ghouls and Ghosts, Monster Hunter and many, many more that proved to be an inspiring outlook with regards to games development in previous generations. But where the company is more notably known for is the ever popular and iconic Resident Evil series. Not only were Capcom able to master the art of arcade games in the past with fighting games such as Street Fighter, but they have, over the last number of years, dominated the survival horror genre of video games. In this video we will be taking a look at the dominance of Capcom in survival horror video games, where we will look at the history behind the early days of the gaming ideas thought of by the developers and what led them to go on to create what is considered by many to be the greatest survival horror series in gaming history. And we will look at the many other classic and popular gaming series and entries that took much inspiration from what is considered to be the most popular franchise in survival horror. Looking back over the history of video games, especially during earlier generations with 2D pixelated graphics, it was very difficult for developers to create any sense of atmosphere or authority with specific types of games. The only games that stood out at the time were platformers and racing games, but even with that, they were still very limited in the various visuals and elements that could be produced. At a time when horror movies were all of the rage, it was very hard to depict any real atmospheric solutions or ideas that could be converted into a game's format, and this was even more noticeable during the early console days of the 8-bit consoles and 16-bit consoles during the mid-80s to early 90s, with the likes of the Nintendo Entertainment System or NES console, the Sega Master System, and with later consoles with the likes of the Sega Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, and even some of the later CD editions and add-ons for those consoles. Capcom during this era of gaming was primarily known for arcade style games, most notably with the Street Fighter series, which saw many different versions or reimaginings of the iconic Street Fighter 2 game that was extremely popular in the arcades but also on consoles with the Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. But Capcom would also produce many other iconic games, and with some of them utilising many horror elements, more notably with Ghouls and Ghosts. The company was very familiar with testing various different types of ideas, and they didn't want to see themselves just focusing on typical arcade ports. They were really adamant that they wanted to try something unique and different that would stand out amongst their peers. During this time, games companies, such as Sega and Konami however, were able to demonstrate signs of creating atmosphere within games. When you look at the likes of early Castlevania games on the NES and Master of Darkness that would be seen on the Sega Master System that presented early attempts to show any sense of tension within video games. In the late 80s, Capcom would try to hand at a game known as Sweet Home, which was based on the movie of the same name that was released during this time in Japan that would only see a release on the Nintendo NES console, seeing players take on the role of a group of different characters that played from an RPG style format, exploring an old, abandoned and haunted mansion with the aim to explore and figure out various elements that provided a unique tension filled story but would utilise many different gameplay systems and turn based combat elements to progress through the story with many choices and consequences that would have a direct influence on character survival to determine many of the game's endings depending on who lived or who passed away. While Sweet Home isn't the scariest game, it definitely set a standard that really had not been seen at the time, and it definitely led the way for games like Castlevania and Master of Darkness to start incorporating many of those elements and visual cues. But where Sweet Home would really make its mark is that it would become the direct inspiration for what is considered by many to be one of the most iconic horror games ever created, which would be Resident Evil or Biohazard in Japan that would be released in 1996 for the Sony Playstation and later on the Sega Saturn and the PC. Resident Evil, while having a very limited production budget to work with during its development phase, would go on to be a huge success while reaching heights way beyond what was ever thought possible. Capcom themselves never even thought that the original idea that started all the way back with the creation of Sweet Home would expand its reach and still be popular even today, while inspiring many other future entries in the series, multiple different types of spin-offs, even other franchises would be born off the development purposes and ideas of future Resident Evil titles that would create their own unique series that again would also expand the realm of the survival horror to the heights that we see it today.
During the early development stages of Resident Evil, there were many ideas that had been thought of and that were initially planned to be developed for the final release of the game, where it was originally intended to be a first person survival horror game, but due to the lack of possible capabilities of the console hardware, especially during the PlayStation 32-bit era, would present many limitations to stop them achieving many of those concepts which they wouldn't be able to fully implement until later generations. It was during these development processes that Shinji Mikami, the producer of the game, had to look for outside influences to figure out ways to implement certain mechanics and features in order to make their way into the final game, and it wasn't until he began playing Alone in the Dark on the PC that was released back in 1992, where it accidentally provided the new elements of inspiration, with the game utilising a fixed camera perspective style gameplay with 3D graphics and pre-rendered backgrounds, all while exploring a haunted style mansion where you had to avoid or defeat various types of zombies, monsters and other demonic entities. It was at this time that Mikami and Capcom realised that they needed to change the direction and the dynamic to move away from the original idea to work with a concept that was more accessible for them to use in the final game. So they completely changed the perspective and outlook to use many of the elements seen in Alone in the Dark to produce the final version of Resident Evil that we are familiar with today. And it was this shift in the change of ideas that resulted in producing and solidifying Resident Evil as the pinnacle of survival horror that pretty much created the whole genre outright and popularised it to a degree that was never thought possible in the games industry. This concept also popularised the various play styles, control elements and dynamics that would spawn many clones of the game also released on the PlayStation with titles like Overblood, Parasite Eve, Galerians, Evil Dead, Hail to the King, Kudelka, Martian Gothic, Vampire Hunter D, with games being added to other consoles with Deep Fear on the Sega Saturn. There are many other noticeable non-horror style games from other developers that would also go on to use this style with The Crow, Time Commando, Hard Edge, In Cold Blood, City of Lost Children, Crisis City, Deep Freeze, Planet Laika, Perfect Weapon, Tunguska Legend of Fate, among many others. These types of horror games are still popular even to this day, with many indie developers producing a lot of very old school concepts, using tried and tested ideas that took many references from these iconic titles of the 90s. Capcom would inevitably revisit the first person perspective idea with Resident Evil Survivor in late 1999-2000 with a light gun style shooter with FPS elements but still lacked many qualities that wouldn't be possible until later console generations. For me personally, Resident Evil changed the way of how I perceived playing games during the early days of having grown up with 2D systems such as the Sega Master System, Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive. Getting to play Resident Evil as one of the first games on the original PlayStation, it was difficult to comprehend the possibilities and see the transition in real time from 2D to 3D gaming that was mind blowing and left you with a sense of excitement and curiosity that in my own personal opinion have never been witnessed in games before. It truly was an exciting time to be a gamer. Resident Evil would spawn many sequels with Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 Nemesis being released in 1998 and 1999 that would reach critical acclaim and are also considered to be among some of the greatest survival horror games in the industry, with Resident Evil 2 considered to be the best overall game alongside Resident Evil 4 in the series as the pinnacle for the survival horror genre and what it stands for. However, not long after the release of Resident Evil back in 1996, Capcom quickly realised that the demand for this type of game had proved to be extremely popular, way beyond what had been expected, so they would quickly get to work on the sequel that would eventually become Resident Evil 2. But if you've looked over any of the historic elements, documentaries or articles online, you will know that Resident Evil 2 had a troubled development process going through many different visions and iterations of the game before the final release, with the most notable version of the game that was almost lost in the wilderness up until recent years. But due to the internet and modern technology, we can now access playable versions of Resident Evil 1.5, which was an early edition of the game that looked totally different from what the final entry would look like and portray, while also having Leon S. Kennedy as one of the main characters, but would instead have a student or biker by the name of Elsa Walker in place of Claire Redfield. 
you would instead have to visit different areas while having a different type of story plot and would also see a completely different version of the RPD police station that was seen in the final version of the game. While many fans are glad that this version didn't get a release, but you can't help but question what the series would have progressed or looked like had Resident Evil 1.5 been released instead of the final version of Resident Evil 2. In contrast, you may have your doubts about how it could have changed the survival horror genre in many ways and it could possibly have changed the vision of how we see modern games today but it's still an interesting concept and case study that is definitely worth revisiting and doing more research on as there is a lot of elements in this version of the game that did make its way into the final version but also made its way into future games in the series and also with many other games from different types of companies so why the game isn't considered to be good in all intents and purposes remains a mystery. But it does propose many questions as it definitely proved as a massive inspiration for the future of survival horror in general so it is worth a look at just to experience the game at least if you can gain access to a version of it there are fans that have managed to piece together the various elements concepts and features that have been found from the original game to create a playable version which you can find online and this would be the perfect opportunity for fans to learn more about the game's history while looking over the past events for new audiences to experience. So if you are a Resident Evil fan, then it is one of those elements that you really should experience. Released in 1999, Dino Crisis would be a new survival horror experience from Capcom that would utilise many of the same elements seen in the Resident Evil series, but would replace the grotesque monsters and zombies with dinosaurs on a remote island where the dinosaurs have been brought back through a time warp as a result of a failed experiment, leaving members of an elite task force to uncover the whereabouts of the scientist who is responsible for this occurrence and to bring him to justice, while also trying to survive the ordeal. Dino Crisis would also be one of the first ever horror games to be played with a full 3D visuals which was groundbreaking for its time. Some other games that also would achieve this feat would be Overblood released in 1997 also on the Playstation and even earlier games with the likes of Dr. Hauser that would see a release on the Panasonic 3DO back in 1994. Dino Crisis would receive a future sequel on the PlayStation with Dino Crisis 2 that would take a more action focused approach but still keep many of the traditional elements seen within the original game and still prove to be quite scary. Along with later entries and spin offs on different consoles with Dino Stalker, an arcade light gun shoot em up on the PlayStation 2, and would also receive a third entry on the original Xbox under Dino Crisis 3 but would completely remove any elements from the previous games to focus on the future in space so essentially it was a completely different game or concept but would be long forgotten in the video game space. Dino Crisis like many of Capcom's future IPs would eventually fall under the radar of obscurity with no likelihood, knowledge or information regarding on whether the series would return or whether there was anything possible for a future sequel however there have been fans developing various modern remakes of the games with the intention to spark interest in Capcom to revisit the series. Many fan remakes have been created over the years or many of them going unnoticed but a select few would capture the awareness of the company with some of the Resident Evil 2 fan games forcing Capcom to take action to have the game shut down which would inevitably lead to the release of the official Resident Evil 2 remake in 2019. There are a number of other titles that have seen a level of success to surpass Resident Evil in recent years even with some competitors with the likes of Silent Hill from Konami that would become one of the first ever games to focus on psychological horror elements which was a concept that had never really been explored before at that time. Silent Hill's gameplay and atmosphere managed to invoke a sense of overwhelming tension and uncertainty in a way that was never seen before which really got under the skin of the player as it made you feel something was off or didn't seem right. No other game had ever made you feel those level of emotions at the time 
earlier Resident Evil games, while still scary, would focus on jump scares more than psychological elements, but later iterations would eventually adapt their gameplay styles to invoke a greater sense of fear. And you can see this a lot more with the modern remakes of Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3 and Resident Evil 4. When we think of survival horror, we will always look at either the Resident Evil or Silent Hill franchises as the two biggest competitors within the space, and quite rightly so, because they are the two games that set the standard. While they are very different, they have something about them that very few other games have managed to master. And while both franchises have had their ups and downs in previous generations, they are still considered by many to have set the standard within survival horror, even to this day. When we think of survival horror, we will always look back to the early generations and days of 3D gaming in the mid 90s and early 2000s as the highlight era for these types of games. As while modern games like technology have improved, there are still elements that have never been bettered since the inception of these games that span back almost 30 years. As technology began to advance and with the introduction of the sixth generation of consoles, with the likes of the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, so arose the production of survival horror style games that took a lot of inspiration from the previous generation and capitalised on the new hardware capabilities to revisit and focus on many of those lost ideas that weren't technically possible on earlier consoles. Capcom would definitely revisit a lot of these ideas to work with new and innovative ideas to build sequels for the Resident Evil franchise, with many different prototypes being built but would result in the creation of new IPs that would also see commercial success. Resident Evil Code Veronica, released originally on the Sega Dreamcast in 2000 and later on the PlayStation 2 in 2001, would be the first game in the series to move away from using the static pre-rendered background elements to be played through fully 3D rendered environments with superior character models that made full use of the more powerful technological features of the console hardware of the time reprising the roles of both Claire and Chris Redfield from the first two games in the series. A spin-off of Code Veronica would be added under the second Survivor game, released in 2002, that would act as more of an arcade shooter. With regards to many of the prototypes and envisions of new styles that were traditionally supposed to be added to the Resident Evil franchise, there would be many games that would rise from these concepts. The Devil May Cry series is a direct result of these processes, as the original game started off life as a working prototype for the upcoming Resident Evil 4, with Capcom testing new ideas with the latest technology of the time to try and develop new systems to cater for the modern era of gaming, to create a different level of atmosphere and tension that was impossible to implement in previous generations. But with the fast paced nature of the game, many of the developers felt that the game would have been too over the top to even be considered as a survival horror game. So they took what was already worked on and decided to create a whole new IP, which resulted in Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry would also become one of Capcom's best selling franchises of all time, alongside Resident Evil. So it's amazing to see the foundations and the history of these ideas and how they came to be. What started off as an original concept for an already proven and popular series ended up being used on another project that would also see great success. Devil May Cry would go on to spawn two sequels on the PlayStation 2, with later entries on the PS3, PS4 and remasters of the original games in the series. The Onimusha series was also born from similar concepts, trying to work with new technology and gameplay mechanics to build for future Resident Evil games and also to revisit earlier ideas that weren't possible on the previous PlayStation console. What was originally intended to be a spin-off to revisit the franchise from a more historic standpoint, there was a version of the game that had been planned in terms of ideas where players would take on the role of a ninja or a samurai in order to defeat demons and monsters that was originally to be classed as a Resident Evil game, but would later be adapted into the Onimusha series, which again, like Devil May Cry, would also reach great heights of success spawning many sequels and spin-off entries during the PlayStation 2 era. Very much like Dino Crisis, Onimusha is another very popular series that has been in the limelight over recent years, where fans have been crying out for new entries of the series to be released, but with little to no results. The only feedback the fans have really gotten in recent years is a remaster of the original Onimusha Warlords that was released for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox in 2019. While it may not exactly be what fans have been looking for, at least Capcom have acknowledged the need and want for these games to be brought into modern times 
and there is still potential for them to be seen by modern audiences so hopefully this can inspire Capcom to revisit these series and see if they can take them any further. During 2003 and 2004 Capcom would create the Resident Evil Outbreak series to test out new concepts while still having many elements from earlier games but would also implement online gameplay and co-op mechanics requiring players to work together to survive. While the concept proved to be popular, the online features depending on the region you were in would be removed due to the lack of quality online technology of the time as online gaming was still in its early stages and the PlayStation 2 console wasn't as well equipped to work with these concepts which resulted in the online features being removed entirely. The Resident Evil Outbreak series is also among the many requested games that fans would like to see Capcom revisit for modern systems, but unfortunately it's unlikely that that will happen, but we can always hope. During the early years of the PlayStation 2 and with the releases of the likes of Devil May Cry and Onimusha, would also see a release taking shape in the third entry of the iconic Clock Tower series that originally started off life on the Super Nintendo and on the PlayStation in Japan developed originally by Human Entertainment but would work alongside Capcom to develop the third game in the series that would move away from the iconic and renowned point and click adventure style to focus on similar gameplay elements of earlier horror titles with Resident Evil and Dino Crisis among others. While the game wasn't considered an overall success, it was highly praised for its graphics, storytelling and its visual presence as it was a visually impressive looking game in terms especially of its cinematic video sequences to be among some of the best ever seen during that time. But most notably, the mechanics used in Clock Tower 3 would play a very important part in a future entry that would be considered to be one of the most underrated survival horror titles of all time, which would be released under the name of Haunting Ground in 2005. Haunting Ground is a very iconic and often overlooked title within the survival horror genre that saw a release in 2005 and would become one of the most popular games to be created by Capcom but would still not reach the level of popularity and sales due to being compared to many of the survival horror games of the time. But as time has gone on, the game has developed a very popular cult following that focuses on very unusual and different topics not seen within survival horror games. While there are plenty of scare tactics in place, but its use of psychological and even adult themed elements in how it portrays the main character is what really adds to the overall dynamic which was an avenue never explored in games at that time. This game essentially was one of the first ever titles to venture into those elements and was quite controversial as a result, seeing the protagonist of the game helplessly trying to escape an old castle while essentially not having access to weapons but would be accompanied by a dog to help protect her. At the same time, different elements in storyline, plots and endings would play out depending on various choices or how you would treat the dog in the game which would determine many outcomes that gave a totally different overlay to the story, which resulted in one of the most dynamic and unusual gaming experiences ever seen in a survival horror genre, and it's for those reasons alone that the game is held in such high regard, even to this day. During the mid-2000s, survival horror was starting to become less popular, with innovative ideas becoming less of a format, with many companies looking for better alternatives to earn more from the games being created. But with the development and release of Resident Evil 4 in 2005 that tested out many design ideas and concepts which resulted in many drastic changes being made to eventually focus on the over the shoulder perspective that would replace much of the iconic survival horror elements with more action focused gameplay which would become the new norm for horror titles moving forward from that point on for a number of years. With Resident Evil 4 the series would gradually move away from its original roots but it still ended up becoming one of the most groundbreaking, influential and best-selling video games of all time, which resulted in creating its own subgenre of action-style games to a point that literally every single over-the-shoulder shooter or action game that you see in the modern era have all been inspired by the gameplay mechanics and success of Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 is so highly regarded within the industry that it is without a doubt one of the best and greatest video games of all time. It was a revolution that inspired so many developers who all seemed to jump on board this very unusual but very different and popular trend to create some of the best action adventure games in existence. These types of games would become the main focal point for the next few years and with the rise in popularity of FPS or first person shooters, more notably with the Call of Duty series from Activision 
would become the dominant force within the games industry for the next generation of consoles moving forward, leaving many developers to cash in on these trends and elements with many iconic franchises, while not having any roots in this type of action, also wanted to change their style and approach to their games to compete with the level of popularity and in terms of sales. As the Call of Duty franchise was doing so well and dominating the industry, they all essentially wanted a piece of that pie, and Capcom had their part to play in this role as it proved that the popularity was possible with the rise of Resident Evil 4 only a few years prior, so they too wanted to capitalise on the success and try to bring Resident Evil into a different format that would focus primarily on action more than horror, which left many fans feeling bitter, but at the same time it also created a new scenario and view of the future of video games, which resulted in the next two entries with Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6 to focus more on action instead of horror. Capcom would later create both Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2 that would manage to combine both elements of action and horror to good effect, which proved that it was possible to mix different styles while still being popular in their own right. But it still wouldn't stop fans from wanting the series to revisit its roots. But despite the fallback from fans with these more modern games, both Resident Evil 5 and 6 would undoubtedly become two of the biggest selling games in the series and some of the highest grossing Capcom games in history. While fans disputed these changes, you could not deny the proof because it proved that action games are without a doubt able to sell in higher numbers than any other type of genre out there. Despite the success of the more action focused approach to the Resident Evil games, there would always be a calling for the series to go back to its original roots. And this would be a tough call for Capcom because doing so would relinquish the opportunity to earn even more money than ever thought possible, but at the same time, it would have caused the company to lose much of its credibility because it showed at the time that the company wasn't really focused on listening to its fans, but rather where the money was going, and once the money was coming in, it would be hard to turn down. But when we look at the way of how games are developed today, it's easy to see the way companies are run, as it really is all about the money, and not as much about the demand as such. It isn't just Capcom that has fallen under this category. Many other Resident Evil spin-off games would be released during the 6th and 7th generation of consoles with Operation Raccoon City and Umbrella Core that would focus on multiplayer elements while moving away from the core foundations of the franchise. Regardless of how you felt about the franchise during this time, there were also really good alternatives. That is why indie games are a great way to fill that void that AAA companies in the modern era don't really entertain anymore as you'll be able to find titles to go back to the roots of survival horror and are able to explore many ideas and ideologies that never seemed possible while being inspired by games of old with the likes of the PS1 era, as many games now use low poly aesthetics, as those type of games are able to create and invoke a sense of atmosphere, tension and even nostalgia that no other games, no matter how beautiful they look, are even able to portray or relate to. When you see the popularity of games with the likes of Outlast and Amnesia, that would bring light to the survival horror genre way back during the early days of the PS4 console being released back in 2013 and 2014 would also play a pivotal role in many content creators on YouTube and other platforms to reach a height of success that had never been seen possible before with online content creation. While many gaming channels online were seeing some level of success with the likes of Call of Duty and other typical online multiplayer action shooting games Many channels were also beginning to focus more on survival horror games, while playing through them and getting scared, showing the tension on screen that really brought the key elements of horror and these games to the masses, and showcased how popular and scary these games truly could be. It also proved to be one of the main focus points of the demand that started to increase from that point on once again with regards to horror games. Seeing this rise in survival horror once again would result in Capcom redeeming themselves and finally taking action to revisit the survival horror roots with the release of 2017's Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, receiving critical acclaim, reaching huge success and is now considered to be one of the scariest games of all time and proved to Capcom that survival horror wasn't dead but in fact it had just been waiting and biding its time for someone to come along and create something that would just change the whole outlook of the genre to appeal to the masses. Resident Evil 7 managed to do this and is highly regarded as one of the best games in the industry to this day and has become one of the main focal points 
that took a lot of inspiration from the controversial yet iconic PT demo that was released on the PlayStation Store way back in 2014 by Konami and developed by Hideo Kojima, the creator of the Metal Gear Solid series, which proved that survival horror was as popular as ever. Resident Evil 7 has proven to be a unique case study when we look at the elements of survival horror as a game has become one of the main focal points with regards to how future games in the genre are developed as Resident Evil 7 managed to capture many elements seen in previous titles and brought them into the modern era with so much detail and atmosphere that managed to present itself as an almost perfect horror experience that very few games have ever been able to fully replicate. While we have Resident Evil 8 Village which is a direct sequel to Resident Evil 7 the game, while still survival horror, doesn't have as many unique or scary elements as it has a more action focused approach compared to Resident Evil 7's slow gameplay style but it is proof that Capcom is aware of being able to balance the dynamics of the two different genre types as Resident Evil 8 Village takes a lot of inspiration mainly from the iconic Resident Evil 4 and yes, further to discussion, Resident Evil 4 is going through a drastic change where it is focusing a lot more on horror and slow paced gameplay compared to that of the original so it's actually doing a complete u-turn which in many cases is unheard of for a remake to do so. While Capcom does have a very unique history and abundance of legendary titles with a huge catalogue of survival horror games and titles under its belt while being the main focal point of many controversies and mistakes over the years with regards to how many various series and games that have been portrayed with the impulsion to want to jump on trends in order to make the most amount of money to compete with the game's market but it was a risk that they had to take as at the end of the day it is a business after all regardless of how we feel as gamers but the very fact that they have taken notice and they have listened to fans to revisit a lot of these games to create successful sequels with Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8 but even to look at many of the titles in the series over the last 20 plus years to also reimagine those titles to create even better versions of the original games. When we look at the Resident Evil remake and Resident Evil Zero which ended up being a prequel originally seeing life on the Nintendo Gamecube but would be added to digital platforms in 2014 with the Resident Evil remake becoming one of Capcom's best selling digital games of all time. Then when you look at the likes of the more recent Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 remakes with the latter having many questions surrounding its development process having removed many important elements from that of the original game seen on the original PlayStation but would still not stop the huge success of the Resident Evil remake and Resident Evil 2 remake that are considered to be the two best overall remade games pretty much of all time and two of the scariest games ever created. So it's not often to see that happen, where developers can take ideas from an original concept but just make it better in a modern day title. Very few companies are able to manage this feat, but some have managed to do that to a very high degree that not only has appealed to the nature of older fans and brought back those all important elements, but would also capitalise on bringing forward new fans to the current generation of Resident Evil to solidify it as pretty much the most groundbreaking series in survival horror and it still continues to evolve and get better to this day. But even with all of these changes, Capcom still have not entirely given up on the multiplayer aspect of the Resident Evil universe, with Resident Evil Resistance and Resident Evil Reverse, as they still want to capitalise on the aspect of multiplayer games online. And while they seem like a good idea, they still don't fully appeal to the long time fans of the series, as they essentially only see the Resident Evil games as a singular experience, that provides all of the tension and atmosphere that is synonymous within the genre. While having many ups and downs and bumps in the road with regard to Capcom's success, the one thing that is notable about the company in general is that they are able to produce iconic games, whether that be iconic arcade fighting classics, when you look at the likes of Street Fighter, that still is as popular today as ever, and you also have the likes of Monster Hunter and the Mega Man series, there are loads of other iconic series but no more notable than Resident Evil being the highlight reel of pretty much every game that they've ever created in existence. So it will be interesting to see where they go from here with the regards to any future entries in the series or any remakes that they are going to produce. Another factor that has contributed to Capcom's dominance in the horror game genre is their willingness to take risks and try new ideas. If the demand is to capitalise on the trends and the nostalgic elements of what gamers are looking for, 
then the future will look bright for this very popular company. As you look back at games and even consoles, we've become used to the various visual aspects and systems that are now in place with games. When you look at the visuals and how beautiful the graphics are, even down to the not so good elements with the use of microtransactions that make companies a lot more money than that of official game sales, not all is lost. But there was a time during the mid 90s when we were able to witness a transition from 2D consoles to 3D consoles, more notably with the likes of the original PlayStation, the Sega Saturn, the Nintendo 64 and later consoles with the likes of the Sega Dreamcast, PlayStation 2 and the Xbox that left a sense of amazement that you just don't see today. It was the perfect time to be a video gamer and anyone that grew up in that era will definitely have witnessed these massive changes that completely changed the way we play video games forever. That general shift was beyond anything that we ever originally thought possible and it was just an exciting time within the industry. While Alone in the Dark may be considered as the original survival horror game in the series, it is Resident Evil that set the standard that would solidify the survival horror genre as one of the most innovative and unique concepts in the games industry. While we do have many clones and other entries in the industry, there are very few franchises that have ever lived up to or even been able to compete or compare to the success of Resident Evil. And this is a testament to the longevity of the franchise and the dominance of Capcom to persist with their ideas to become one of the most important influences in horror games. While there are many questions surrounding the future of video games development, just know that horror games will still be popular and Capcom will be there to continue to produce entries that will scare gamers long into the future. Now we have looked over the many elements regarding the past history of titles being released by Capcom that have also inspired many other companies and future development teams to create their own versions of horror games that would also go on to see huge success, which is something that we also need to look more into, which you can do so by checking out this next video that looks into the many elements, features and inspiration seen in many of these legendary survival horror titles.